Today's video is sponsored by SpecOps Password Policy, the ultimate solution in securing your Active Directory passwords and continuously blocking over 4 billion breached passwords. Visit them today at specopssoft.com. In today's episode, let's check out what's new and cool in Entra ID. And there's some pretty good stuff coming. You'd best buckle up. <laughs> Hey everyone, how are you? Nice to see you again. I really do appreciate you dropping by. Well, on today's episode, I thought I would take a look at what's new and cool in Entra ID, or AKA Azure Active Directory. And there's been quite a few changes, both in security as well as some new features in authentication. And I thought, you know, I'm going to take you through uh, some of these. Okay, now, if you have any questions about this, or in fact, any of my other sessions, then don't hesitate to uh, get your comments down below. I really do appreciate it. And if you want a little bit more, why not consider signing up to my Patreon site, and you'll get access to full courses and so much more details are down below. Now, just before I jump in with the demos, I just want to quickly mention that in July, I'm running a couple of my own masterclasses on, online. So I'm running a cybersecurity masterclass as well as an identity masterclass as well. So if you want to take your skills to a whole new level, then check out the link below uh, for more details on those courses. And it would be great uh, to see you join me. All right. So I think without any further ado, uh, I think it's about time we jump in. All right. So and again, any questions? Again, get them down below. And in the meantime, you enjoy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm coming in here into Entra ID, and I'm going to scroll down. And in uh, Entra, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the Protection tab. Now, one of the new features that you'll notice here is we now have application policies. And it was kind of the missing link, actually. I'd just like to mention, by the way, that I can't fully demo this um, because I this particular tenant that I'm using uh, doesn't have an Azure AD workload identity license. So one of the first things that you would need is you would need to go ahead and set that up. But needless to say, I can still demo it for you. So what we have here is with an authentication or an application policy, rather, um, you've got a default policy, and you can also create a custom policy as well. And you can see it's looking for a particular application ID. So you could do this on a, on a default ID kind of basis. And you've got password restrictions, and you've also got certificate restrictions as well. So I can come into the password restrictions here, and you can set this up on, let's say, application restrictions or registrations. So, for example, you can put uh, policies or application policies based on those application registrations. So, for example, I could say, you know, um, any uh, registrations, let's say, before the 1st of September. Um, you can set up a, you know, a password lifetime for those. Um, if you have any uh, settings configured, you can actually uh, copy those to the uh, various enterprise apps as well. So rather than managing to do this in two different places, you can just do this uh, in one place. Um, you can also set the password lifetime as well. So any apps that create passwords, again, you can set, for example, um, apps created after a certain date, or you can set the maximum lifetime in days for a particular app. So I can say, yeah, you might, for example, set the app password at, you know, remember, nine, 90 days. Um, symmetric keys, so if you're using symmetric keys for additional layers of security, again, you can... Uh, manage that. You can also configure the key lifetime as well. So if you wanted to regenerate fresh keys. Um, so again, those features are really useful. And you can also block things like custom passwords as well. Um, so it's just that little extra layer of, uh, of security there. Now, um, the other thing that we've got is you can also configure uh, certificates as well. So you can put certificate restrictions for both app registrations and enterprise apps. 
So again, you can specify the key lifetime for the asymmetric, that's the public-private key pair, and you can, you can enforce this after a specific time, either a date or, an, again, a number of days there. Now, um, so app registrations, again, we can then go to enterprise apps. And again, you can do the same thing for there as well. So, uh, you know, if you register your own apps within your organization and you're just looking for that additional layer of kind of security and specifically when it comes to app registration, you know, things like passwords for that, it's really nice to see this now available in one place. Now, for my number two, I just want to mention a few kind of interface improvements because there's definitely been a number of improvements. And for this, I'm going to come into the settings pane in authentication methods here. And what we now have is we have something called reporting suspicious activity. And what this does is you can allow users to report suspicious activities during their login attempts. And the idea is that you work with your users to try and determine if there are any potential underlying issues. Now, at the moment, this new feature is currently Microsoft managed. However, um, you can choose to either enable this and manage it yourself, or you can switch this feature off. But essentially, it works alongside things like conditional access, um, and if you're using risk-based conditional access. Now, just to remind you that um, for risk-based, um, you do need the identity protection, so that's a P2 license. However, the conditional access license, of course, is just a P1 license. All right. Um, so really useful. By default, it's targeted to all users, but you can target this to specific groups, and you can set your own reporting uh, mode here as well. You can also, this is where you can configure things like a system preferred uh, multi-factor authentication method. And again, this is another Microsoft managed feature. Um, so essentially it delegates whether, or designates rather, uh, whether the most secure authentication method is presented to users. Um, uh, and as it says here, if it's sent, set to Microsoft managed, it will be enabled by Microsoft uh, in the appropriate time. So again, you can either set this to all users or exclude specific users. Again, the default, as you can see, is on, but you can choose to enable it so you manage it, or you can make that decision whether you're just gonna let Microsoft manage it. More information on that, uh, again, there's a couple of uh, links here that take you through to the Learn uh, documentation on learn.microsoft.com. But there we go, suspicious reporting activity. Really nice feature. So up next, I want to talk about uh, authentication methods. And one of my favorites, of course, is passkeys. If you've not seen my passkeys video, then go ahead and check it out. A passkey, by the way, is essentially a FIDO key. A FIDO key is a normally a hardware-based token that uses public and private key, and it uses something called attestation. In other words, it has to prove who you are, and it typically does this through a biometric. But of course, the problem with these little keys is they're really simple to eat or lose. So now we can actually assign these to our mobile devices. And it's super easy to set up. You can just basically go in here to the Microsoft Authenticator preview, and you can see it's generated three keys here. And one of these is for Windows devices, iOS devices, and of course, Android devices here. So typically, you will uh, allow self-service sign up, enforce attestation, and you would then set up what we call a key registration policies. Now, every app, you can see that we have what we call an AA GUID, an attestation uh, unique identifier. So applications have these, um, devices have these, and you can add these if you want to allow them or to block them. And it's currently in public preview. So once you've assigned this and the user signs in, essentially it's a pretty simple process. So rather than signing in with a username and password, the user can simply use their mobile device 
and it will combine it with a biometric and it will allow the user to authenticate. I got to tell you, this absolutely rocks and I really do believe that this will finally get rid of passwords. So definitely check it out. More details on learn.microsoft.com. And this is passwordless authentication. Absolutely brilliant. Check it out today. Along with that, we also have another new feature as well. This is authentication methods, or add an external authentication method, I should say. And this is pretty simple to do. Um, so this replaces the custom uh, extensions for applications, the authentication extensions that we previously had. So what I'm doing is I'm adding in the values from my vendor. So the application uh, here is from, from Cisco. And I'm adding this in. I'm um, authenticating it. So I'm going to say, yep, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to target this. And I want to make it uh, enabled for all of my users. Of course, you can target it for specific users as well. Once you've done that, you simply pop over into conditional access. And we'll need to create a conditional access policy for this. So what was kind of a complex thing that involved code is now considerably easier. So I'm just going to give the application a name. I'm targeting it to my users. And in this example, I'm just going to target it to one user just to try it. And you should always do that, by the way, with conditional access. Just target it to one user just to make sure that it's actually working. And therefore, it saves you having any potential issues. I'm choosing multi-factor authentication, and I'm just going to click on Assign, and I'm going to switch this particular policy on. I'm going to switch over into Private Browser, and I'm going to log in. I'm going to sign in as Bill Gates. And you can see now that that uh, extension has come in. So the first time I log in, I'll just need to prompt for my password. And now you can see it's asking me now to verify my identity using that third party Cisco authentication mechanism. And once that processes, you can see that I am now redirected back to the vendor. And now I get my application. If there is a third party authentication, I go ahead and do that. And I now get my desktop. Very nice. So for the last feature, I just want to come in here back into Enter ID. And I'm going to come up to Manage Tenants. Now, there's a few things um, that's recently changed. If I try and go, first of all, and create a new tenant, then it gives me the choice. Do you want to create a new workforce tenant or do you want to create an external? Now, something that's been quite controversial recently is Microsoft's decision to not let you create just regular workforce tenants. These are the tenants that we use in our day-to-day -day businesses. Now, uh, unfortunately, you can only do this, and as it says here, is if you've got a paid subscription. So the one that you can create, again, this is something new. Um, if you're working with, for example, third-party applications, and if you want to allow single sign-on for your applications, but let's say not to enter ID, but to, let's say, third-party applications like Facebook or Google and things like that. So you can use those third-party authentication providers. And I can simply say, hey, I want to come up and I want to create an external portal. Now, do you want to create a free trial or do you want to use an Azure subscription? I'm going to go ahead and just go with the free trial solution. So yes, of course, I agree to everything and off it goes, and I'll get my free trial tenant. Now, the free trial tenant, what this does is it allows you to uh, essentially set up those third-party identity providers for your Enter ID. And this is particularly useful if you're producing or generating your own custom code, your own applications, and it just means that you can then integrate that with third-party identity providers. OK, so now we can come in and you can see sign in your uh, users in one of three easy steps. So do you want them to come in via email? So again, uh, irrespective of whatever email you're using, or do you want them to come in using an email on a one time passcode? So again, you can make that uh, options for me. I'm going to just go ahead and choose email and password here. 
Now, one of the things you might want to do is if you've got a logo, you can uh, bring in your logo here, and you can also set your background color here as well. So you can choose the, you know, whichever background color you want to choose. So again, for me, I'll go with uh, blue here. Blue's always a good color, isn't it? Uh, and the next thing then is, do you want to choose a, a typical layout? So do you want it to be center, or do you want it to be right aligned? Again, I'll go with center. You get a little preview here, uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to continue. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click continue. And now you can see, okay, what type of app do you want to configure? Is it going to be a desktop app, or is it going to be a mobile app? So again, I could choose a mobile app. So which value or which app do you want to use? And again, this is where you can choose the language that you're developing the app in. Again, if it was a, a app here, you can see I'm using uh, .NET at the moment. So again, I'm just going to configure and continue. And now uh, I'm going to go ahead and take me to the admin center. So now that this has been completed, it's a case of, hey, I'm ready to go. So you can see here, I'm currently under free subscription. Um, beyond that, you would need to add in a trial subscription here. But needless to say is I can now start adding in my own apps. I can customize that. And of course, I can change the way the users sign in. So do I want, once you've added those apps in, what I can now do is I can now go into user flows, which is in the external identities portal and I can now create that all important new workflow. So uh, again, you get like a little demo here. Um, so I can uh, click into that and have a look at that, of course. And you can see it talks about, you know, with identity provider. So I've just chosen an email with a password. I can choose uh, that it's talking to the email address and so on. Um, and you can then run that uh, user workflow there. Now, the other thing um, I can also do is I can go back and I can say, hey, you know, I want to do another workflow here. What type of workflow do you want it to be? So again, it could be a one-time passcode, but you can choose to align it and also require certain attributes that you want to collect. Okay, so again, just call it whatever you want to call it. Um, choose the identity provider. Now, it is expected that with the full license, you're going to get additional ones here. So things like Google, Facebook, um, all of those are, um, initial sign-ins. So basically, if you want to have a look at the multiple tenants, like I said, you can have a go at this. It's totally free at the moment. Um, so go ahead and check out that external tenant uh, portal. Okay, there you go. So there you have it. What's new and cool in Entra ID, aka Azure Active Directory? I really hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for joining me. And remember, if you've not subscribed, bump the subscribe button, ring that bell, and come and join us. All right? I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button, and you won't miss out.